the X-59 awaits. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready to see NASA's newest X-plane? NASA and Lockheed Martin have come together to introduce the extraordinary X-59, an astonishing fusion of supersonic speed and serene quietness. This game-changing research plane promises to revolutionize air travel as we know it. Prepare to behold the future of supersonic aircraft at the exclusive unveiling event held at Lockheed Martin's Design Center in California. Witness the birth of a new era in aviation, where the X-59 takes flight towards smoother, quieter skies. Experience the marvel and watch astoundingly low noise levels coexist with extraordinary supersonic speeds. Keep your eyes peeled as we reveal the incredible technology behind the X-59 plane. Experience this groundbreaking marvel for yourself as we take you behind the scenes at Lockheed Martin's Design Center in California. Prepare to be awed by the X-59 plane's sleek design and revolutionary features. Join us as we delve deep into the futuristic design and technology behind the X-59 and get a sneak peek at its first public appearance at Lockheed Martin's Design Center in California. Get ready to embark on a thrilling journey to the skies. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St now, NASA and Lockheed Martin have unveiled what they call the next generation of supersonic aircraft. The maker said the experimental plane combines supersonic travel with low noise. The public got the first glimpse of the new X-59 research plane at Lockheed Martin's Design Center in California. The manufacturers say it will break the sound barrier and stay no louder than a car door closing. The last supersonic commercial aircraft Concorde stopped flying more than 20 years ago because it was banned from flying over urban centers as it was too loud. The X-59 Quest, short for Quiet Supersonic Technology, an airplane that could lead to a new generation of faster-than-sound airliners. The sun set on the previous generation over 20 years ago with the final flight of the Concorde which has since been relegated to museums. The Franco-British ultra-fast passenger plane was always too expensive to operate, but that wasn't its biggest problem. Aircraft generate pressure waves in the air, kind of like ripples in water, that propagate away from them at the speed of sound, over 1,200 kilometers an hour. When a supersonic plane hits or exceeds that speed, the pressure waves compress and merge into shock waves. These are perceived by people on the ground when the plane passes over as a loud thunderclap of sound, called a sonic boom. NASA and aerospace company Lockheed Martin have been working on the X-59 since 2016. It's an experimental plane able to fly faster than sound that doesn't blast the ground with unwanted noise. Using models and new technologies, the company's engineers came up with a design that minimizes the boom after the plane crosses the sound barrier. Only smaller waves reach the ground, making only as much noise, its makers say, as a car door thudding shut. The X-59 design still has to go through rigorous testing. Its developers are also planning trips over population centers to see how people perceive its sonic footprint. The first flight is slated for later this year. If the plane passes those tests, they could one day make high-speed flight quiet enough to be a feasible possibility for passenger planes. Some people would say, well, why do we need another one of these? We got rid of the Concorde because it didn't work. The issue with Concorde was that it was loud and it could only fly across oceans. Right off the bat, you're limiting the ability of a supersonic aircraft to do anything commercial. What this aircraft does is it allows hopefully the shape. That's what you look at anything that flies. It's the shape and how that thing moves to the air that creates the sonic booms or, in this case, doesn't. Of course, you may say, well, it doesn't look very green. Again, it's the shape of the aircraft. You may have the same shape that the X-59 has that could be powered by hydrogen or even electric. That was exciting. We were finally figuring out how to do the fast thing without breaking everybody's eardrums. Designated the X-59, this NASA research vehicle is also known as the Quiet Supersonic Technology Demonstrator or Quest. Let's take a look at how this unconventional jet could lead to two-hour New York to London flights and supersonic airliners that are faster than the Concorde and why there may be some unique military applications for this technology. Time is money and speed is life. The faster you can get somewhere, the more time you will have to do the tasks, you need to do at your destination. In aviation, more speed typically gives you more options in case things go wrong. 
this is true of personal travel on airlines or military aircraft en route to a target. When it comes to airlines, there's been an unofficial speed limit of about 600 miles per hour. For a typical airline flight from New York to London, travel time is around 6.5 hours, and that hasn't changed in 50 years. It's not that we can't design aircraft which can travel faster than that. In fact, the Concorde was an airliner that could fly at over 1,300 miles per hour, more on this incredible airplane later. So why does this speed limit exist for airliners? Well, it comes down to two main reasons, efficiency and noise. For an aircraft to travel faster, it must produce more thrust, which in turn requires more fuel, and more fuel equals more cost. More efficient engines and more streamlined designs can help, but to this point, most airliners have been optimized to fly around 600 miles per hour or just under the speed of sound. Flying faster than the speed of sound is represented by a Mach number, where Mach 1 is supersonic. Today's airliners and biz jets fly at speeds around Mach 0.7 to 0.8. Surprisingly, this speed limit has nothing to do with technology limitations, but with noise. When an airplane goes supersonic, a loud shockwave or sonic boom is heard. This loud noise can be annoying or even disturbing to people on the ground, and as a result, many countries including the United States have banned overland sonic booms for civilian aircraft. But what if we could make sonic booms quieter or virtually unnoticeable to people on the ground? NASA is working on exactly this and has developed the X-59 Quest. To understand how the X-59 solves the noise problem, we first have to look at how sonic booms are generated. As an aircraft flies through the air, it is continuously creating pressure waves that emanate from the airplane. These waves travel at the speed of sound, which is about 678 miles per hour at 30,000 feet. The pressure waves travel in all directions, like the ripples formed from a drop of water. When an aircraft goes supersonic, these pressure waves begin to pile up ahead of the airplane and compress, forming shock waves. This is similar to how waves pile up in front of a boat as it moves through the water. As an aircraft approaches the speed of sound, these shock waves will move out and away from the aircraft, creating a sudden change in pressure. This change occurs so quickly that we hear it as a loud boom or crack known as a sonic boom. Remember the Concorde? While it could travel at Mach 2 or 1,350 miles per hour, the sonic boom it generated was loud enough for several nations to restrict its supersonic travel to just over the ocean. An incredible feat of engineering in one of the most beautiful aircraft ever to grace the skies, the Concorde made use of delta wings and a slim fuselage. In service from 1976 until 2003, the Concorde's technology worked, but the economics and acoustics didn't. It was too expensive to fly and too loud to operate supersonic over populated areas. But the dream of commercial supersonic travel did not die with a Concorde. In fact, Prior to the X-59, NASA experimented with an unusually shaped F-16. Known as the F-16XL, this aircraft was initially a competitor to the now-famous F-15E Strike Eagle. While the XL lost that competition, NASA soon pressed this double-delta-winged fighter into service to study, among other things, quiet sonic booms. The pair of XL aircraft were designated numbers 848 and 849 and were fitted with aerodynamic gloves with tiny holes to study laminar flow over the wings. These gloves did reduce the noise generated by sonic booms, but the cost to produce such gloves on civilian airliners was deemed too expensive and the program was cancelled in 1999. Fast forward to today and the quest for silent sonic booms has once again resumed in the form of the purpose-built X-59. This long and slender design helped shape the volume and lift distribution of the aircraft, which spreads out the buildup of shockwaves so that they do not group or coalesce into very strong front or rear shocks, which typically are the cause of a loud sonic boom. Additionally, the X-59 is designed to fly at higher altitudes around 55,000 feet. Today most airliners operate between 30 and 40,000 feet. This increased distance from the ground also reduces the noise heard from the sonic boom. The X-59 is powered by a modified General Electric F-414 GE-100 engine, which is similar to engines found in the Navy's Super Hornet. A proven and durable engine, it should allow the X-59 to fly at speeds of Mach 1.4 or just above 1,000 miles per hour. And while it will fly supersonic, the real question is, how loud will it be? 
you are probably familiar with decibels which are used to measure sound loudness or intensity. What you may not be familiar with is a metric known as perceived loudness or PL. PL is used in the field of psychoacoustics to measure the subjective perception of the loudness of a sound by a listener. In other words, PL is a way to measure how loud a sound seems to us, considering how our ears and brain understand sound. For example, a firework going off 500 feet away would have a PL value of 113.6. The Concorde sonic boom had a PL of 105. The X-59 sonic boom is estimated to have a PL of 75, which is equivalent to the PL of a car door being slammed across the street. So the X-59 sonic boom is more of a sonic thump. Aside from its design shape to reduce noise, the X-59 also features a flush cockpit. This along with a long and pointed nose effectively obstructs all forward vision. In order to see the pilot makes use of an enhanced flight vision system, or EVS, which consists of a forward 4K video camera. This flush canopy allows for a more streamlined aircraft, and will likely become the norm as supersonic and eventually hypersonic airlines become viable. So what would one of these quiet supersonic airliners look like? Here is one such concept, which features an elongated fuselage. This aircraft also makes use of variable or swing wing technology. Swing swept outward for takeoffs of landings, and then wing swept back for supersonic or possibly even hypersonic flight. At speeds of Mach 2.2, this aircraft could make the New York to London trip in 3.5 hours, compared to the 6.5 hours it takes today. If this airplane were able to achieve Mach 3 speeds, then that same trip would take just 2.5 hours. Keep in mind that while the sound problem appears to have been solved by the technology demonstrated in the X-59, we still have to consider the sound problem. We still have to contend with the efficiency problem, specifically fuel. An airplane flying at Mach 3 or even Mach 2.2 would burn enormous amounts of fuel. But perhaps if these designs prove viable, then flying passengers may be willing to spend a little bit more to get somewhere much faster. There is also the economy of scale, as more supersonic aircraft are built and carry passengers, then costs will go down. Again, this was tried before with a Concorde, but perhaps today we are at a point in aviation technology where we can make supersonic commercial travel a reality. This, obviously, you'd have to scale it up. There's already several companies that are waiting eagerly for this information because they're looking at their next way of jumping ahead to do supersonic. The thing with NASA, is NASA, is a government agency that's designed to push the envelope pun intended and figure out how to do these difficult things and then hand it off to the private sector to say, okay, we figured it out. Now go do something more interesting with it. Right now, it's too small, but you said these other makers can make it bigger and more commercially viable. Usually, you start with something a little like this in an air tunnel, wind tunnel, then you make it bigger and bigger. Now they have something that a pilot can fly. If it shows that indeed they're going to fly it around the country and have people say, well, did you hear it? Once they've done that test, they'll go back and say, all right, here's what we learned. Here's how the aircraft industry can. They can figure out how to make it bigger so that a whole bunch of us can fly inside one of them. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date you can become an exclusive member so click on our perks through the link the description below thanks to watching and see you next time